Municipal Commissioner of Mumbai, uh, Sri Mehta, Kulkarni sir, ladies and gentlemen, and dear students, my colleagues of the DP. Uh, after this brilliant speech and brilliant disposition on uh, good governance, and uh, especially about civic governance, with uh, replete with so many examples and very telling examples. There is not much that is uh, left for me to say. Uh, actually, this is the first time I have heard uh, Ajay talking to a group of people. And I'm astounded by the uh, oratory that he showed here. He's a brilliant orator. And it is doubly creditable because in bureaucracy we are taught, taught, uh, taught right from the beginning to keep quiet and <laughs> listen to others and advise in a soft voice. So a person who never talks otherwise comes here and gives a brilliant speech uh, is really commendable. But since uh, the organizers have told me that you have to give what they've written down as a special address, and I was thinking, what can be special address? Uh, I don't think I have too many things uh, specially to add, except that I will take you through this uh, process and how it uh, all came into uh, having the students participate in the planning process of the city. Uh, Mr. Mehta mentioned some of the things that have already gone into the RDDP, but these were right at the last stages. Uh, we had already submitted our draft DP, and then this idea came from Saili and Prachi that we haven't involved the students. And that set me thinking, how did we miss it? Because we had so many stakeholders who participated. There were lots of organizations, lots of individuals, three to four months of very inter, uh, interactive discussions with those people, and still there is a stakeholder and such a vital stakeholder that has got left. And uh, then I read something which uh, psychologists call uh, inattentional blindness. What it means is that if you're doing a large job, and you're concentrating on it, then something which is very obvious misses your eye. And uh, that is dubbed as inattentional blindness or myopia. So we must have suffered from inattentional blindness, at least I did. And I only realized after this was brought to my notice that we need to have it. Because otherwise on public platforms, I have been talking that we are a country which does not interact with academia. Theory and practice in our country do not come together. Bureaucrats work in their silos, the universities work in their silos, and there is very little interaction. If there is a beginning of an interaction, it dies very quickly because nothing is picked up from the other side. One side does not like the other. Uh, too many as uh, status quo is like the bureaucrats, like myself, do not like fresh ideas. Sometimes we feel the academicians don't bring in fresh ideas and they have rehashed it from somewhere else. But I think uh, we are missing a great opportunity in this country that we are not bringing academics into the process of uh, governance of this country. And the sooner we did that, it would be a great learning example for both of us because theory has to get enriched by what is hap happening on ground and practice has to get uh, better by interacting with those who work on theories and both have to contribute, uh, contribute to each other. As we know, when you do a lot of practice, that is from where theories emerge and then they get fed back into practice so that those becomes the standards on which you base your decisions. So that is why this was an example which was immediately picked up and I talked to the municipal commissioner and he immediately responded with a yes that we must do this and if there are brilliant ideas that come forward, we should see how they get incorporated into the work that we are doing since the DP process is still not complete. Uh, so while uh, a lot has been said about uh, delayed engagement with young planning students. The fact is that the MCGM probably is the first municipal corporation in the country which formally invited students to get into planning of a city. 
And uh, we must congratulate the MCGM for taking this lead. And as Sayali said, uh, let us hope that this becomes a practice, that this builds relationships between the academia and the decision makers in government. I congratulate uh, on my behalf students who participated, students who won awards, and uh, uh, it, it needs to be said that we had a lot of interaction at several stages with these students, and I found them extremely positive, extremely enthused, and uh, uh, they only wished that this relationship could go longer. Uh, I could inform you that the MCGM does have a uh, platform for interns to come in, where we interact with the interns, give them certain specific tasks, and they perform those tasks, and those tasks then get into policies. Uh, I've just had a group of students from the university who, will, who have uh, come up with a policy paper after we gave them a, a task Th that was on uh, erecting multipurpose housing for women. They visited all the women's hostels. Uh, they went and saw the plots that have been reserved in the DP, and they have come up with ideas as to how we should go forward constructing these new facilities that are better than what we had earlier. So uh, there is so much work, and there, is, there are so many ideas that it is impossible for the municipal corporation itself, which is uh, busy with a lot of other things, to come up with these new ideas. And therefore, the participation is absolutely essential, and we welcome such kind of participation from the students. Uh, at the moment, I'm more worried about ideas that have not got implemented. And this is a worry because in many of the interactions with citizens groups, uh, I find them telling me that they worked hard, they have come up with ideas, they have put, in, put things together, but because of a change at the level, at the top, in the municipal corporation, these fall by the wayside and never get implemented. And that disheartens groups because after all the work that they have done, uh, there is no end result coming out of the effort that they had essayed for such a long time. And therefore it is important that if ideas come, we must take them forward. I would therefore bunch these ideas into uh, essentially four, a four stage process. Uh, what has already come into the plan, as Mr. Mehta said. Uh, what will get into policy, because we are currently busy with formulating policies on how plan items would get implemented. Uh, what may get into policy documents that probably municipal corporation would not do, but the state might do. One of these ideas about uh, vacant housing here. Housing is a, is a state subject, and while the municipal corporation could definitely levy taxes on people who kept housing vacant. It needs also to be taken up by the state and get into the housing policy as, what, as to what we do with these, these vacant flats in a city like Mumbai. Because such a resource in a city where people don't have a place to live cannot be kept vacant. And lastly, uh, what may fly in the air as ideas? And that is also useful uh, because ideas that keep on flying suddenly get caught and begin to have legs. You need to put the idea out. It may not be picked up immediately, but after 10 years, 20 years, you suddenly find that some, someone has read that idea and is keen to get it implemented. And it has happened with me when I was reading reports earlier done while doing the DP, and I came across an Atkins report done two decades earlier where there was the idea of parking authority. And I thought, yes, this is an excellent idea, and it needs to uh, get into the municipal working, and we need to establish a parking authority. So the strength of ideas being out in the open is extremely strong. And therefore, you need not be disheartened if a particular idea has not immediately been picked up. It might get picked up at any time, and you would not even know that it has struck a chord with someone and it has gone into policy documents. Uh, so that is, that is the process we are going to follow in terms of following up on ideas that students have picked up. 
Uh, and uh, we will see that most of them at one of these stages, the, the policy stages that we are currently on, get into, into these various policies that we are putting together for the municipal corporation. We have also decided that in case there are certain recommendations by students that we cannot put into our policies, but which will go to the state, we will put them together in a set of recommendations and recommend to the state government that these may be taken up. Because as you know, the DP is towards the last stages in moving from the corporation to the government. The government will then have a look at the DP and finally, give its stamp of approval when it becomes operational in the city. So there is, there is still a stage to be covered where these ideas can come into fruition. We have been talking on uh, DP and planning for a long time, but uh, Mr. Mehta very rightly moved from planning to governance. And that is extremely important. Planning a city uh, and governing it are two separate things. They are two broad areas under which uh, a city could be divided. The, the plan is preparing the product, and you need to prepare a good product. If you have a bad product, then operationalizing it becomes difficult. I frequently give the example of a car when we were together in Ahmednagar, which newly came to me, and the first time I sat in the car, the handle fell down. And I had to send it to the garage because uh, the handle had to be fixed. Uh, and repeatedly, the car used to go to the garage. And therefore, operationalizing that car was a difficult thing. However, I currently have a car uh, for nine years, and I have never sent it to the garage, even once. And I find uh, handling it is extremely easy. So the planning aspect is extremely important because if you do a good plan, then operationalizing it becomes govern governing that city becomes much easier. But all said and done, even if it is a good plan, you also need good governance in a city and brilliantly exposed by, uh, by Mr. Mehta on what good governance actually constitutes. I will talk a little bit about that aspect of civic governance because uh, we are also working on a committee which is looking at transparency, efficiency, and accountability and how to bring that in within uh, ULBs. Uh, I think it's a very important subject now becoming more and more important. So while a lot of uh, good governance practices have come in and we have moved a long way in terms of stakeholder participation and good governance practices, uh, there is recognition that uh, urban local bodies are actually currently in great difficulty. Uh, that is primarily because they have a lot of pressure. It is demographic pressure. It is uh, functional pressure. It is uh, fun pressure by functionaries, pressure by citizens, uh, and therefore, ULBs have a lot of things that they need to do. Uh, one of the key aspects which is extremely weak and on which uh, I would lay special stress is finances. Because a city essentially runs on functions, functionaries, and finances. Uh, uh, Mumbai Municipal Corporation probably performs the largest number of functions that a ULB performs. The western part of our country has very complete urban local bodies, unlike the rest of the rest of the country where there are a lot of parastatals and municipal bodies are fractured in terms of a mandate to do uh, things for the city. But all of them are financially weak. The small ones are even more weak. And uh, if you want to do functions to the order that will satisfy the people, you have to match them with the finances that the municipal corporation needs. We can keep talking about uh, poor governance and other aspects of a municipal body, but the crux of the matter is that there is, no, there is a complete mismatch between 
finances and functions in the ULBs. The other is that while we have expanded governance, we have statutes in our country uh, which need a complete rehaul. And that is because we have not made changes. And it is in the nature of changes that if you don't make them when you need to make them, then they, became they become aggravated and you need to go into more radical changes. So postponed, postponement of changes only needs to greater radicalism. That's what a revolution is about. What is a revolution? A revolution is change, it is fundamental, and it is brought at breakneck speed. And that is because the backlog of reforms was so large that it had to funnel itself through a revolution. Uh, I think we have come to a stage where we have ignored uh, signals that were there out in the, in the public, and we need to make uh, changes that would be extremely radical. We will have to make systemic changes. Uh, we need to bring in great transparency. We need to have a system in which the ULB functions where the executive is also accountable. You cannot have someone else accountable and someone else exercising the power. That's the kind of a duality that has crept into the municipal systems today. And unless we rectify that, it seems difficult that in the future, the ULBs would be able to satisfy uh, the mass of citizens which, uh, who are aspiring for better quality of life. Uh, that is all that uh, I had to say today. I don't think this is the occasion for uh, a more detailed discourse on urban local bodies. It's a moment of rejoice. It's a moment of rejoice because with this event, we have done two great things. One, we have tried to give a signal that academia and uh, government must work together and take this forward. And we have further expanded the views expressed by Mr. Mehta in terms of uh, governance where stakeholder participation has further been broadened. These are very healthy signs. I hope what ORF has done here gets picked up by other cities, other organizations, and they help this process along so that we have a richer, better uh, city discourse out of which better cities come into being. Thank you.